I went for a walk to the shops to get some beer. Decided I couldn't be bothered walking to Asda to get some speckled hen, so I doubled back and cut across some waste ground. Underfoot are crumbled bricks. A russet coloured square hole in the ground. I cut diagonally across, stepping on strips of metal that sit upright as my foot rolls it, then clangs back down on the brick. Old industry, old warehouse or factory, old jobs and old workers. The ground bones of the past employees may as well be lying there, buried amongst the rocks that used to house them five days a week, five days a week before the P-45 flapped through the letterbox and onto the floor of the hallway. News that no one wants to hear. News that you are no longer needed. I wonder about the people who walk past or take a shortcut across that piece of waste ground. Some who maybe work there. The place I used to work, now rust-coloured dust in a hole in the ground. I had friends there. I remember the time Mad Archie was operating the lathe and nearly took his thumb off. He was still up the pub that night. Didn't play darts for a few weeks though. Thumbs up Archie, that's what we called him after that. I still see him on his allotment when I'm walking past with a dug. We gab through the fence. Big white scar running the length of his thumb. Gives him grief in the cold, he told me once. The last time I saw him, he fed Duke with a piece of Mars bar he was eating. Duke slabbered it up and then sucked it back up again. And thanks, he nose darts his hand through the gates and licked his chocolate fingers. The time before that, Archie called me round the gate and led me up to his shed. Cracking wee shed he's got. Built it himself and painted it a dull mossy green. He handed me a carrier bag filled with veg from his plot. I made a smashing pot of soup with that. Did me and the wife a whole week. You can't whack that. Fresh veg dug out the shit of the earth and fucked in the stock pot all on the same day. None of that sitting under fluorescent tubes and supermarket pish. No plastic wrapped garbage. When I was chopping this stuff I could still smell the manure. You don't get that Nasda. Horse shit doesn't sell a nice carrot. People want them shiny and bright orange. They should get fucking Graham Norton advertising as the carrots. I wonder who's got the job of washing all the wee carrots. I can mentally imagine the layout of the old workshop. I can still hear all the noises contained under its corrugated roof. And the noise of the rain in the roof in the morning before the machine started up. Fucking magic. It's a sound you only miss after it's gone. When I was a younger man I used to go camping, big fishing weekends with the lads and I carry out. A way out in the country, stars, a campfire and dirty jokes. When it rained and the drops battered down in the canvas of the tent. Reminded me of being a wee boy in the scouts. And it was canvas tents, not anymore. Now they sell these man-made waterproof membrane things. It's like a big cagoule held off your head with a couple of poles. I remember one day there was a total eclipse. Me and wee steady Eddie went out the back door with our welder's masks on and looked up. What a fucking sight. There's a, there's a bit just before the proper eclipse happens. The sun looks like a big diamond ring. Then the diamond gets lopped off when the moon gets into its position. Steady Eddie loved all that stuff. He told me once about how the moon was made when a big asteroid or something from space smashed into the earth. Really smart guy. He died a few years back. We called him Steady Eddie because he had Parkinson's. And that's what killed him. Poor bastard hardly recognised you towards the end. I remember the day they ripped this place down. Me and a few of the other boys were standing outside. They took the corrugated iron off the roof first, put it in a big pile at the end of the yard. Then they got a big JCB shovel and rattled it off the walls. They didn't put up much of a fight, folded to the ground, thudded to the ground like that fucking P45 when it fell through my letterbox. I kept the brick, stretched my arm under the fence the demolition boys had put up and I grabbed it. The lads called me for all the fannies under the sun, but I still got it. Sits in the mantelpiece. 
She kept saying she was going to bin it, but when we got that new three-piece terracotta coloured suite, she decided that she liked it. It goes with the furniture now, she said. 